most people living in this area here, uh, which is also the hottest part in, in the city. Uh, red being uh, the, the, the hottest um, sections. In small blue spots you see are the private swimming pools, um, which are not necessarily located in the hot parts, as you can imagine, uh, but in affluent suburbs. And uh, in green are the uh, public swimming pools. And you can, you can deduct easily by visual examination, using no <laughs> statistical tool, that the hottest and most densely populated area, it, which happens to be the, also the, the poorest area uh, around here, it is a place where you, you find no beaches, no pools, and lots of uh, heat. So um, we are uh, just uh, next year uh, going online with, with that system, which is uh, refined and offers mo more uh, information at, at the same time. Uh, we've added the chronic, the same uh, basic uh, census area, uh, uh, dissemination areas, with uh, more information about <coughs> high um, proportion of uh, chronic medical condition, that kind of stuff, so you can overlay all this information and have your hotspots in town where eventually preventive efforts or uh, emergency preparedness uh, should be increased. One other thing uh, in climate change is the relationship with pollution, air pollution. And you can see here um, what has been proposed by Natural Resources Canada as a good um, adaptation to climate change uh, <coughs> to use wood, wood stoves for heating. And uh, it's still, um, it, they, they modified only last year the website uh, saying that, and now they, they propose that as a, a tool for more autonomy during power outages, um, which is a great idea. But uh, most people, when they have a wood stove at home, they say, uh, uh, why not use it outside the, uh, out of the power outages periods? Uh, which is uh, about 364 days uh, per, per year where you can use it uh, uh, without having a power shortage. Um, here uh, in Montreal, you see it's very low. Uh, the, the burgundy here is the, 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 the people using it every day and the, the pale blue is um, from time to time and the uh, pale yellow is not at all. On Montreal, Island and Laval Island just beside. You see, uh, it's, I believe it's 3% that use it every day and probably 2% from time to time. Uh, the northern suburbs you see much higher and the South Shore here around 10%. This pollution alone this winter created more smart days, winter smart days, than they were in the summer. I believe uh, Stefan, how many days did you have this winter? I think So out of 38 days above the limit, I believe there were 20 or 21 this winter related to wood heating, which is huge. Um, so the, 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 there are some measures being taken provincially and also in Montreal about that already. Uh, another thing we did was model mortality, search mortality in relationship with climate. This is not the, the normal <coughs> normal curve about uh, of mortality where we, we die more in the winter than we do in the summer because of uh, cold, of course, also because of influenza. And <coughs> in some studies done elsewhere in Europe, um, the, the overall effect of climate is uh, to, to reduce that, uh, that winter peak and to flatten a little more um, this um, low happening in, in, in the summer. Uh, so basically that's what we find in most studies, but not all, and especially in North America, uh, you don't find that uh, necessarily. What we found for Quebec was that we, we adjusted the uh, relationship. This is cold, the cold side uh, of the year, and this is the hot side of the year. The optimum, the, the lowest mortality rate being around 15 degrees Celsius. 
So we die more um, and very rapidly so uh, when it uh, goes around 30 degrees and we die more when it goes towards minus 10 and more. <coughs> In Europe, uh, probably because they don't heat as much as we do, they, maybe they're, they're, uh, um, um, the, the, the cost for eating is, is much more and it does make a difference. The other thing that we did uh, in, in our study is that we control for influenza, for trends, uh, because there are less people dying from cardiovascular disease in Canada, historically, for the last 15 years, <coughs> for different reasons, uh, less smoking, uh, possibly uh, more effective therapies and that kind of stuff, more people getting vaccinated against influenza is another reason. So we did adjust for that, and what we found is that uh, the, the, the overall effect will be an increase in summer mortality in the future compared to now and less decrease in winter mortality that we can see in Europe uh, because of the reason I just mentioned. So uh, in 10 years from now we already see in most, Quebec, in most these are the, the largest Quebec cities, uh, cities in, in the province of Quebec, we already see in 10 years from now uh, a little increase in mortality in most places, being, of course, a little more important <coughs> around Montreal, around here. Uh, between uh, uh, half uh, uh, a point of uh, uh, a little uh, less than 1%, basically. When you go in 2050, and that is the uh, other scenario A2 uh, of the IPCC, which is uh, what kind of uh, CO2, uh, CO2 evolution that we're seeing now, uh, we already see an increase of 2% uh, uh, on a, an annual basis and uh, a much steeper increase uh, later on. And of course this is done under uh, the, the conditions in the scenario is that the age structure is the same. Uh, as most people over 65 will die much more, which is natural. Uh, anyway, uh, we, we can say that is, it is probably a, a minimal estimate of things to come. Um, the other thing under this uh, scenario of less increase in CO2 is a somewhat uh, decreased uh, increase, uh, especially in the later uh, years of the century. <coughs> and most of these deaths happen in the summer, in the period of three months, two, three months. Basically, we're talking about 700 extra deaths uh, per year um, under that scenario in, in 50 years from now, minimum. And of course, this it it's, doesn't include heat waves, uh, things like uh, the one that happened in 2003 in uh, most of Europe, but mostly in France, because <coughs> we could not model heat waves because we never had real ones here in Quebec. So uh, basically this is a very serious public health problem eventually uh, to happen here uh, like it has happened elsewhere. What do the public uh, wants to do? What uh, are they ready to, to do? Um, they, 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 the management people, they realize they'll have to basically uh, work on the problem uh, they already know their own vulnerabilities. They think that it will happen, that it will be a serious problem for the next, uh, coming in the next 10 years. But they mostly think that it will happen elsewhere instead of in their place. Um, so they are ready to act, but basically uh, they don't have the, the, the mandate at this stage. They don't have the legal responsibility, uh, but they, they are willing to, to work, and this is very uh, they are very open-minded about that. They haven't started yet, and I believe it's still the same. And most managers say that they don't need really more money. Their first thing is to know more, more practical information. What can they do? Uh, the, the climate data uh, predictions in 10, 20, 30 years from now uh, for their own regions, uh, they need more uh, political and institutional support uh, because the uh, managers in, in municipalities they don't check 